everybody and welcome. I'm Tammy from Nutmeg Notebook and today I am taking Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen Challenge. So Dr. Greger runs nutritionfacts.org where he shares evidence-based scientific medical information with us so that we know the best things that we can do for our health. So today I will be using his app. You just go to your app store and download the Daily Dozen app and in here is what I'm going to be challenged with, trying to get all of these wonderful nutritional foods in today. So I will be sharing with you throughout the day my exercise as well as what I'm going to be eating and how I'm doing on the challenge. So I have already had one glass of water, so I will be able to tap that. And I'm getting ready to have a cup of hot water with some lemon juice, so that'll give me two. And then I'm also going to be taking my vitamin B12 as well. So I'll get started, I'm gonna get some check marks, and then because it's a rainy, stormy day here, I'm gonna hit my treadmill, which I thought was kind of funny because we know Dr. Greger loves his treadmill. So I'll be doing the treadmill today to get my exercise in, and I'll check back with you in a little bit. Hey everybody, back on my treadmill now doing my exercise for the Daily Dozen Challenge, and I'm watching Dr. Greger. And guess what? He's on his treadmill too. All right, I'll check back in with you later today. Hey, it's lunchtime, so I'm so excited to build my lunch, and I thought I would share it with you. This is for the Daily Dozen uh, Challenge. So I already took and chopped my salad. I batch prep these for the week ahead of time. And then I like to chop it. It just makes it easier to eat. So what is in here is kale, arugula, red cabbage, spinach, red onions, broccoli slaw, shredded uh, carrots, mm, tomatoes. So a lot of yummy stuff already right inside my salad. So I'm just going to transfer it to my bowl that I'm gonna eat out of. And it smells absolutely amazing already. So excited. Okay, then I have a wide variety of things that I'm going to put in it. And this is actually how I normally eat. And I do only eat two meals a day. Um, I'm not hungry in the morning for breakfast. I like to exercise in the morning and I don't like to have anything in my stomach when I do that. And then by the time I get done with that and you know, I'm showered and I'm dressed, um, it's just kind of late in the day. I just wait for lunch. That's when I'm really hungry. And I usually have this beautiful chopped salad for my lunch with a wide variety of things that you can see. So this is a dill, lemon dill chickpea salad that I just made yesterday. So it has the chickpeas, fresh dill, some dried dill, some celery, some carrots, and uh, some tofu that I use to make my dressing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that here, and that is about a cup's worth. So that's gonna get me some of my beans in for today. And then this is a multi-grain pilaf that I make in my Instant Pot, a couple different rices. That way I'm getting um, more grains and one serving. So I like to do what Dr. Greger suggests with his small uh, or brawl, and although I do it gluten-free, and just cook multiple grains together, and that way I'm getting more of those all in one serving. So I'm gonna just add that here, and this is a half a cup. I freeze it, I make it, and then I freeze it in half cup servings. And of course I have some Brussels sprouts. These were just fresh Brussels sprouts that I steamed um, lightly. And you can do that ahead of time as well and put them in your fridge and they will just stay really nice for you. And you can add them to lots of different things. So chopped salads, nourish bowls, hippie bowls, just you know, as a side dish with any of your other yummy things that you like to eat. Then these are some peppers that I roasted yesterday. These are just those sweet little mini peppers. They have them right now at Costco and they're absolutely wonderful. They're almost like candy when you oven roast them. Then I have cucumbers. 
These are Persian cucumbers. These are my favorite because they don't have seeds and they're really, really sweet. So they just add a nice flavor and some crunch. I like the different textures that I get in my salads as well. And then berries. So I have the blue berries. These are some fresh blueberries. I'm very fortunate we live in Northern California and we have access to absolutely incredible produce here. So I want about half a cup and I'll have some more berries later today as a dessert. And then I have some fresh strawberries. We can still get fresh strawberries here grown in California. I know in many places the season is already over for you. So we'll just add some of those in here as well. This is kabocha squash. I like to make one like every week and then I will just keep it in the fridge and add it to my salads and um, you know steamed vegetables, whatever it is that I'm eating. So love that all that color. I also have a tablespoon of flaxseed and a quarter teaspoon of turmeric. And usually I add that to my chopped salad and I forgot. And so I'm just gonna pour it in here and I will mix it in as I'm eating. And then I have sprouts. So I do grow my own broccoli sprouts and it's super simple and easy. It only takes like four days to grow them and they're super packed with nutrition and it's very inexpensive. You can do it for absolutely pennies. You don't have to have any special equipment. I use a quart size canning jar. And then I have some microgreens. I do buy these. I haven't started making my own yet, but these are delicious and I can get them at a couple of my local stores and they're absolutely wonderful and packed with so much nutrition. And then I have a tablespoon of pumpkin seeds my husband and I love to put pumpkin seeds on our salads every day. We have some, he usually has two or three tablespoons and I stick with just one. And then just for added flavor, I do have some extra fresh dill that I'm just going to use my kitchen shears and just add that because I'm just gonna reinforce that flavor and fresh herbs and dried herbs are full of healthy ingredients for us, lots of antioxidants, lots of good nutrition here. So I have that, I think that that is everything. And then I will also just give it a drizzle of this California balsamic simply lemon vinegar. Let me show you there. It's light, it's delicious. Dr. Greger says vinegar is good to have every day. So I'm gonna just drizzle this over the top and it adds a nice little bit of flavor. And I like that little bit of vinegar with everything that I have in here. This is what we call eating the rainbow because I have a lot of color in here and lots of nutrients and antioxidants and it's also going to be delicious, which is also very, very important because if it isn't delicious, we're not going to eat it every day. And this is a habit that I can do every day that I look forward to. And this will keep me full until I eat dinner at about six o'clock or 6.30 tonight. So let's see what this got me on the app. And I actually, I took notes to write it down and I think I'm doing pretty good with this challenge um, just because of the way that I normally eat. So this is just a good way to see what are we doing. So beans, I'm gonna get to mark off. I think a serving is considered half a cup and I have a cup. So I get to mark off two of those. So that's exciting. And I have my berries, so I'm gonna mark that off. And then I also have um, it'll, it, other fruit that I'll have later today. Cruciferous vegetables. So the Brussels sprouts, the arugula, and the kale all count towards the cruciferous vegetables. You only have to have one, and I'm well past that. 
and then greens. I have lots of greens in here because I have my spinach, my kale, my arugula. So I'm going to get to count both of those and other vegetables, which I also have in here because I have the peppers and I have the cucumbers and I have the carrots. So I've already made my quota on that. My tablespoon of flaxseed, I have that. The tablespoon of nuts or seeds, I have that with my pumpkin seeds. Herbs and spices, I have the turmeric and I also have the dill, but you only have to have one. Whole grain, I'm going to get to mark off one of those. Let me see, here we go. So doing great, I've had um, three glasses of water today. So I'm going to get to count those. I just have two more to do. I did my exercise on the treadmill that I showed you earlier, and I took my vitamin B12. So I'm doing great. There's just a few things left that I need to get in at dinner, and I'll be back to show you what I do for that. So right now, I'm gonna go and enjoy my lunch. Hey everybody, I'm back and it's dinner time. This is the Daily Dozen Challenge from Dr. Greger's NutritionFacts.org and I'm doing great on it. I'm so excited. So for dinner, I thought I would do one of my favorites, which is like a burrito bowl. I love, love, love Mexican food and you can make delicious whole food plant-based Mexican meals. So I'm going to start off with some dark leafy greens. I don't usually buy lettuce because lettuce isn't as versatile. Dark leafy greens, I can saute. If I don't get them used up before they start to go bad, I can pop them in the freezer and then I can use them in smoothies or in soup stews, chili, what have you. So they're very versatile and they're sturdier than most lettuce. And so they last longer for me. So I'm gonna, I have a nice deep bowl here. These are one of my favorite bowls for making like nourish bowls or burrito bowls. So I'm gonna put a layer of these in the bottom because this is just a really great way to get in some extra greens. I try to have greens at every meal and I'm going to end up heating this up and so they're gonna wilt down. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put a few more in there. And then I have a uh, grain to go in. And this is a mixture of three different things. So this is oat groats that I cook in my Instant Pot so that they come out granular, kind of like brown rice. And then I've mixed them with brown rice and some wild rice because then I'm getting a lot of different grains, but all in one serving. And so we'll put some of this in. And I only want about a half a cup because I have a lot of starch going on in this dish. So I have that and I absolutely love corn. And when it isn't in season, then I have frozen corn and it works out great. There's nothing wrong with using frozen fruits and vegetables. So we'll put that in there, it adds a lot of color. I have black beans and I have just seasoned these with a little bit of cumin, ground cumin powder, which I absolutely love, some garlic powder and some onion powder. And it makes them very delicious. And you can use canned beans or you can make them in the Instant Pot really easily. So I'm gonna put these in here. This is about a half a cup. I don't really measure anything. I kind of eyeball it, but it's about half of a cup. And I love black beans and pinto beans. They're so delicious. Okay, so what else do I have? I have some salsa here, and that is going to add a lot of flavor. Now you can make your own salsa, or you can buy some uh, low sodium salsa. It's really easy to make. I have a recipe on my blog called Tammy's Easy Red Salsa. You just make it in your food processor, or your blender and it only takes a few minutes. You can make it at home quicker than you can go to the store to buy it. 
Then I have some green onions or scallions. And when I get these at the beginning of the week, I go ahead and clean them and slice them and then put them in a covered container in my refrigerator and they will last for days. And it makes meal prep so much easier because I've already done the work. You know, at the end of the day, you're tired and you don't always want to cook everything from scratch. So this is a really good way to be able to still eat healthy at the end of the day. And then a little bit of fresh lime juice. So citrus juice adds a real nice punch of flavor to everything, whether it could be orange, lemon, or lime, which is one of my favorites. And so I'll just squeeze that over the top. And if you're trying to eat low sodium, a little squeeze of some citrus juice will really make it tasty. Okay, so we're good with that. And then what I would do is just put a little bit of cilantro on top. Now, I learned how to store cilantro so that it will actually last for about two weeks in my fridge. And this was from the book Fridge Love by Kristen Hong. You take your cilantro when you get it home, trim the bottom of it, put it in a glass jar with a little bit of water, and then cover it with a produce bag and put it in your refrigerator and you will be amazed. I've had it last for a little over two weeks. Of course, how long it's gonna last is gonna depend on how fresh it was when you first bought it, but this is a great tip. Okay, so I'm just going to trim this, use my little kitchen shears. I love cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, it's okay. I'm so glad that I like it though, because it has such great flavor. It's amazing. So then also, I love corn tortilla chips and you can get the fresh corn tortillas where all they have in them is just corn and maybe lime juice and water. And if you want to, you can put them in your air fryer without any oil at 375 degrees and anywhere from four to seven minutes, depending on how thick they are. And then you can make, these are the little slider size, and this makes a wonderful little tostada, but I can also cut them into triangles and make chips, or I'll cut them into little strips, and then I'll have crunchy little tortilla strips that I can put over the top. And then I'll just pop this in the microwave for a couple of minutes to heat it up. Those greens are going to wilt and all the rest of it's going to heat up nicely. And then I'll have it with my little corn tortillas. And then for dessert, fresh fruit. This is nature's dessert. So I have red pears from California and clementines, which are absolutely delicious and juicy, also from California, strawberries from California, and then I've got some black raspberries, and that will be my dessert. And this will make for a wonderful, filling meal. Now, if I wanted to, I could add some avocado, but I'm thinking that this has plenty of food in it already, So, but my husband will probably want a little bit of avocado on his. So let's see how I've done today in total. So I'm going to open up my app here and the Daily Dozen app. So make sure you download that for yourself. So I have another serving of beans. Bingo, made all of my beans. I have uh, three more servings of fruit in here because I had fruit at lunch. So I'm going to get all of those. I've already hit the mark on all of my vegetables, whole grain, the tortillas, and the rice and um, pilaf with the oat groats is going to account for the rest of my whole grains. And I had water um, at lunch and I had water this afternoon and I will also have water with dinner. So that will be my last water and I can X that out as well. And then I have hit all of my targets for the Daily Dozen today. And you know what? It was really easy to do so. And I have discovered that I'm actually doing pretty well. Um, probably a little bit 
lax on the fruit this time of year because I'm a big summer fruit lover. And so the one thing I saw is that I could add a little more fruit to my daily diet during the winter months. So I want to remind you to get the app and then also you can download a nice little packet of information. You get the Daily Dozen Meal Planning Guide and this will really help give you direction on how to eat and what to choose. And also it will tell you what constitutes a cruciferous vegetable, what is a green vegetable and so forth, as well as give you quantities so that it will make it really easy for you. So I'm challenging you to take the Daily Dozen Challenge and see how you do and then you challenge another friend. Let's let everybody get healthy this year. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.